What's going on everyone, ODC here, and I'm back with another action figure review. Today's review, we're going to take a look at the Mythic Legion's Advent of Decay. This is Delphina of Atheros. Uh, Delphina is really good looking. Um, I love this figure. She shares a lot of parts with the female deluxe knight builder set, uh, as far as a lot of body pieces go, as far as... Um, a couple of the um, or the head goes as well. The head also is included with that. Some of the shoulder pieces as well. Um, but uh, talking about her backstory here, uh, Delphina actually was very intrigued from a young age uh, with the Templar Knights, is uh, uh, be, due to them being very mysterious the way they operated, and uh, um, she actually joined the Templar Knights and was founded by. So Gideon Heaven's brand at a very young age, the uh, ripe age of 19, and to decided to um, enlist in the Templars. And um, she it pretty much just says that she's been a vital member and uh, maybe she leads um, her own squadron or whatever or, uh, group into battle. Uh, but it just says that she's a vital member. It doesn't really say anything else. It doesn't uh, divulge really uh, into too much after that. So maybe her backstory is a little bit on the bland side. Um, there's definitely some other backstories that were a little bit more intriguing as far as wanting to look forward into learning more about them. But, uh, the figure itself, I think is, is, uh, another one of the best figures, um, in this wave. I think as far as, um, accessories and stuff that she comes with, um, it, it looks really good. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with the overall aesthetics of the figure. Um, I really like the gold and the silver and the red and white coming together. Everything looks really good and uh, very pleased um, with um, even if you're just going to stand her on your shelf and you're not going to actually like uh, play with her or pose her around or anything like that, um, that uh, she will do her job and do it well. Um, but let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into accessories and we'll be right back. Okay. And we're back with all of Delphina's accessories, um, except for excluding the shoulder pauldrons and the belt, which is already attached onto the figure. Uh, I'm not really going to count those, I guess, but they are technically accessories. So, okay. First up, we've got her single arrow which is probably going to be included with the crossbow. Uh, nicely done here as far as the sculpt goes. We've seen this a couple times. Uh, this arrow is also included in the, um, the weapons packs. But uh, here's the arrow. Looks pretty good. Nice sculpt for the arrowhead tip. And then we've got a uh, nice silver paint for the shaft portion of the arrow. And then we've got some red feathers to pretty much match with the rest of her Templar uh, outfit. All right, next up, we've got her crossbow. Crossbow looks pretty cool. Um, it does have this little notch right here, and it is a, um, an actual string, which is wrapped around. Um, and you kind of want to pop that string behind those little hooks right there to give off the illusion that it is cocked back and ready to be used as far as the uh, weaponry goes. Um, and simply, all you want to do to pop the arrow on is place it within those two little prongs right right on the center there for the crossbow these two little prongs right here and then it'll sit right in there and it won't go anywhere it looks pretty good i think as far as that set up um we pretty much have a trigger handle right here which is painted silver we've got the crossbow front section right here uh, the bow section, I should say, uh, is painted a silver. And then we've got the string right here. And then the rest of the stock for the crossbow is painted a nice brown with a little bit of black paint shading going throughout. So really good job on the paint overall with this. And I think the overall design is pretty nice. I just kind of wish that they uh, came with hands to actually um, use this type of crossbow I don't have a problem with the design really i just kind of have a problem with the the hands not really working too well as far as functionality goes as far as looking down the sights for these crossbows all right next up we've got the quiver looks really good i really like this color palette for the quiver uh, we got a nice uh, lighter brown right here it looks like a very leathery type brown and then for uh, the little design right here we've got a nice like a charcoal 
gray color for the design and the section going around the quiver looks really good. We've got the each individual um, uh, arrow painted right there. We've got a silver and then we've got some red for the feathers. Uh, matches well with the single arrow that we get as well. And then we've got some black paint in between the arrows to give off the illusion that those are all separated and in the quiver. Um, the, the spine is uh, not painted. It's pretty much just, oh, actually it is painted. It's painted a lighter brown. I take that back. It's a lighter brown for the stitching on the spine. Then we have this hook system, which hooks right onto the belt. Whether you want to have that belt going bandolier style or around the waist is entirely up to you. Okay, next up, we've got the sword that she comes with. Um, this is uh, one of the smaller swords that we've seen since wave one. Uh, nice design for the sword. Don't really have too much uh, against it. It's just that we've seen it very commonly as far as a lot of the Mythic Legions figures go as far as single releases. Um, nice... Uh, Silver paint for the blade, and then we've got some gold for the handle and the handguard portion. Okay, next up we've got the shield, and I'm pretty sure that this is the same exact uh, sculpt and tooling for the uh, the first uh, Wave 1 type shields that we got already. Uh, it's a nice looking sculpt, I like it. Nice, nice silver paint for the outlining of the shield, and then we got some white with the red cross going on it. Flipping it around to the other side, we've got the silver plastic. Um, so that's decently done right there. Nice shiny silver plastic. And then we've got the handle as far as the handle peg system. Okay, and last up, we've got her alternate head, which is pretty much the same head that came with Gwendolyn Heaven's brand. It's just painted uh, with black hair, uh, black eyebrows. Um, still looks pretty good. This is one of my favorite unmasked heads as far as this wave goes. And, um, yeah, looks really good. I like the, uh, the, the black, uh, or the darker shade, uh, of red for the lipstick or the lips or whatever you want to call it. Uh, the eyes look beautifully done. Nice glossy finish to the eye. I think that looks really good. The black hair doesn't have really any shading going throughout. It's pretty much just a black, uh, black paint going throughout. Uh, but the overall sculpt of the hair, I think everything looks really good. I like the, uh, the kind of comb over swept look for the hair. Okay, and this is what Delfina looks like without her helmet on and with the, the alternate head on, the unmasked head on. And uh, I almost wanna say that I might actually have her pose with this head and leave Gwendolyn with the um, masked head on or the helmeted head on with the lid propped up. So this way we get a little bit of uh, differentiation between the two, we don't just have uh, two different characters with the same head, and they look kind of like clones of each other. But this this is a beautiful head sculpt. I really like it. Like I said, it's one of my favorites as far as this uh, the the newly sculpted alternate head. So um, definitely like it a lot. So good job as far as accessories go. Okay, something to point out as far as a QC issue here that uh, I had. Um, I know this looks worse than it is. Uh, <laughs> it's going to look really bad in a second. Uh, I was trying to take the head off and the head itself came off. It, it's really not the end of the world. I know, like I said, it looks really bad, but once I put it back together, it doesn't look all that bad. There's a little bit of, uh, I guess, a gappage issue right there. Uh, but if I use some super glue, some light super glue going on there, um, this was due to me trying to, to get the head off, even with some heat. Um, the the hair actually popped off. I tried to do it um, cold and the hair started moving cold. Um, and I was actually using back and forth pressure. I was being very gentle and back and forth pressure. I wasn't pulling at the bottom of this, which I don't suggest you do if it's already pegged on. Um, I do understand that the pe the neck pegs are removable due to the, the figure being modular. But um, if that neck peg does come out, I definitely suggest that you pull on the neck, not the head. Um, this, I, like I said, I started using heat and then the, the hair just fell off. Um, I was like, Oh God, Oh, there goes the hair. Um, I wasn't really too upset about it, but, uh, and it, may, it might just be with mine that this happened. Um, like I said, at the end of the day, it's not a big deal, but it is something to point out that did happen to mine. And I wouldn't be doing a, the review justice if I didn't point it out. So in case it does happen to you, it's not the end of the world. Just get a little bit of glue. Don't use a lot. A little bit of super glue. 
and then just try and line everything up properly and uh it, it's it will go back together so your head's not broken you don't have to worry about that my head's not broken i'm not all upset or anything but uh, it is something to note so as far as quality control goes the heads are not uh, securely fastened as much as maybe you might like okay as far as sculpt and paint go for delphina i think uh with the head on since i already showed the unmasked head uh we'll go with the the masked head for the sculpt and paint work. Uh, the sculpt and the uh, the paint work on the, on the alternate head, the unmasked head, is beautifully done as well. Uh, but uh, with the masked head on, I think it's, it's done just as much justice. Um, there's a lot of black paint shading going throughout those eyes. Uh, there aren't any actual eyes in there. Um, it's just pretty much a black paint. It uh, is a very shiny plastic as far as the silver goes, and then the gold paint over uh, with the cross on the, the front of the face looks really good. The breathable holes look really good. Nice uh, sculpt work with the breathable holes right there. The little gold rivets on the side of the helmet look really good. Moving on down to the shoulder pauldrons, which is pretty much just like a silver plastic with some gold rivets on the front of the body and then on the back of the body as well. So really good job there. Uh, removing one of the shoulder pauldrons will then reveal all of this other detail that they have going on here as far as these uh, rivets for the armor, this little spindle circular piece right here with some gold right here and then gold on each rivet going around. Uh, very well done as far as uh, detail, attention to detail goes. Um, over here on the back, we've got some white paint for the continuation of the cloth. Uh, we've got a little bit of like red paint right there, but I, you know what? It's not the end of the world. Maybe that could be like a little bit of blood splatter right there from some battle or something. Uh, then we have some black for the, um, or the silver for the buckles and the black for the straps uh, for her armor piece or chest piece right here. Um, I like that this is kind of like an overlapping chest uh, protector right here. So she already has armor underneath and then she's got this kind of strapped on kind of... Um, uh, extra armor right here, almost like a, a protective vest of some sort. But I like that it's an overlapping of the symbol right here. So there's like a, you can tell that there's a symbol underneath this and then a symbol on top. Really good job. This might be one of my favorite female um, armored bodies as far as this wave goes. Uh, moving on to the shoulder armor right here, we've got some silver paint with some gold lining and then some black going in between nice uh choice for paint scheme as far as that goes we've got also got some gold lining going throughout down the body or down the arm excuse me uh onto the elbow um armor onto the gauntlet we've got the same kind of design with the shoulder right there with the gold and the black paint uh, the under armor right here or the chain mail is got some black paint shading going throughout the silver Looks really good. And then we've got this nice, beautiful cross, which is a continuation going throughout the, uh, almost the from the upper torso all the way down to the to the shins here. Looks really good. And uh, the crotch piece looks really nice as well. Very nice, nicely done. There is some uh, black paint shading, some scuffing uh, actually on this. And that's to give off that battle hardened look. Moving on to the legs. The legs look really good, including the thigh armor. Nicely painted there. It's a continuation with the rest of the gold and the black that we've seen with the rest of this body. Like I said, the continuation of the under armor right there or the chain mail is got some black paint shading going throughout and it continues onto the back of the legs as well and onto the tushy booty. Um, <laughs> looks really good. I'm very pleased with uh, the overall sculpt and detail on this. And uh, if you're looking for uh, you know, a female Templar, um, this is where you, you've got to get. Okay, as far as articulation does go, her head can swivel at a full 360 rotation. Her head does look up. It does look down. It does pivot side to side. Uh, we got some job turkeys up in here. Um, her arms go up about that far. That's maxed out. And then they go down full 360 rotation without the pauldron on. This is the range of motion that you'll get with the pauldron on. Uh, the pauldrons can move up and down as well. So there's that swivel there after you peg them in. But it is a little bit hindered due to just the pauldron being in the way. We've got a single bend at the elbow, a swivel at the elbow. We have a swivel at the gauntlet, and then a swivel at the wrist. 
And then we have a hinge joint at the wrist as well. We also have a diaphragm joint, which does pivot side to side and can crunch back, can crunch forward. This is a pliable plastic, this little piece going kind of protruding out. So it will flex a little bit when you try to get that uh, forward crunch. Um, she does have a waist swivel. She can do the splits just like everyone else. Very well done there. The legs can go forward. They can go back. Um, she's got upper thigh swivel, a single jointed knee. She's got a knee swivel, a boot swivel or a ankle swivel, an ankle hinge, which points the heel and points the toe nicely. And she does have a little bit of a ratchet right there uh, while you're moving that hinge joint. And she does have ankle pivot and two peg holes at the bottom of her feet. Okay, as far as her packaging goes, we've got the typical single-carded packaging for the Mythic Legions with the Mythic Legions logo down below. We've got the Four Horsemen logo on the right up top. On the left, we've got MythicLegions.com, SourceHorseman.com, which is the forum, and StoreHorseman.com. Flipping it around to the back, we've got some beautiful artwork featuring uh, Queen Artemis, Faunus, and Joe Run Runshaper. On this side, we've got her clan logo, which is the Order of Aetheron. On the other side, we've got a picture of Delphina with her helmeted head on. And here is her read-up. If you want to pause it and read it, you can. Okay, as far as size comparisons go, we've got two Marvel Legends here. On the left, we've got Luke Cage on the Hyperion body mold. And on the right, we've got Multiple Man on the Bucky Cat body mold. Okay, next up, we've got two female Marvel Legends on the right We've got Valkyrie on the larger female body. On the left, we've got Psylocke on kind of the average female body. Just to note, I thought it was kind of funny that Psylocke and Delphina almost have the same haircut, just kind of opposite of each other. <laughs> okay, next up, we've got a WWE Elite figure in Shawn Michaels on the left. And on the right, we've got a DC Universe Classics Hawkman. Okay, and lastly, we've got a Motu Classics in Vicor on the left. And on the right, we've got... Sha so, Gideon Heavens brand. Okay, so my final verdict for Delphina of Atheros is uh, going to be a two thumbs up. I'm going to give her two thumbs up and stick with that. I'm not going to put in too much stock that uh, her head, her her unmasked head, which you see right here, uh, did fall apart because you know once I glued it, it was fine. Uh, it might have just been I got the oddball out. I got the maybe the lemon as far as all the others were concerned. Um, so I'm, I'm willing to consider that it was just a fluke, uh, but I did have to point it out in this review because if I didn't, I wouldn't be doing my job as a reviewer. Everything else on her is solid. I didn't have any quality control issues as far as loose joints, um, as far as um, uh, paint chipping or anything like that. Um, all the accessories she comes with, I think, work. Um, it makes sense as far as her theme goes to look a little bit different. I like the fact that she came, comes with this new crossbow, the new quiver, the new arrow, the single arrow. Um, I like that she actually does reuse some parts, uh, from the previous waves, like the smaller sword and that Templar shield. Uh, looks really good. Uh, overall, this is one of my favorite armored female bodies and uh, I'm very pleased with how she turned out overall. Sculpt is there. Paint is there. She comes with two different heads. She comes with an ult a beautiful alternate head that you see right before you. And um, she looks great. I mean, whether you want to have her helmeted or have her unmasked, um, do with it what you will. But that's pretty much it for me. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you like Delphina? Do you not? Uh, but let me know in the comments below. I'm pretty intrigued to what you guys think about her. Um, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell for notifications to you see two little parentheses hanging over the bell. This way you know you get all notifications instead of just occasional notifications. Um, hit the like button. It's free to do. It helps my channel exponentially. And uh, I greatly appreciate it. And uh, yeah. I'll see you guys on the flip side.